Understanding Sets and Subsets of Real Numbers, Lesson 1.2b. So as we learned in the last video, the set of real numbers includes the subsets of rational and irrational numbers. To understand sets and subsets, let's take a look at pugs. Pugs are a subset of canines. Canines are a subset of mammals. Mammals are a subset of vertebrates. And vertebrates are a subset of animals. Animals include vertebrates and invertebrates. But under the vertebrates, we have mammals, then canines, then the pug. We could even list collie, German shepherd, and other dogs here, couldn't we? So, pugs are a subset of canines, mammals, vertebrates, and animals. By understanding which sets of numbers are subsets of types of numbers, we can verify whether statements about the relationships between sets are true or false. Here it says, all perfect squares are rational numbers. Well, this is true because perfect squares are a whole number and whole numbers are rational numbers. Here it says 0 0.33 and we have the bar over the top showing this three is repeating. It's saying it's an irrational number. Well, this is false, so I circled the F because this decimal has a repeating digit three. We know that from the bar on the top and irrational numbers don't have repeating digits. This one says all rational numbers are real numbers. So remember, in the set of real numbers, there are rational and irrational. All rational numbers are real numbers? Yes. This is true because every rational number is a subset of real numbers. Here it says no irrational numbers are real numbers. Well, this is false because all irrational numbers are a subset of real numbers. Here it's telling us to circle all of the irrational numbers that are integers. So we're looking for rational numbers that are integers. And think, integers are positive whole numbers and they're opposites, including zero. So opposites means across zero on the, on the number line. Here we have one fourth. Well, that's not a whole number, that's a fraction. So it's not this one. Here we have negative 12. Well, that's the opposite of positive 12, which is a whole number. So yes, negative 12 is a rational number and it's an integer. Here we have this fraction, it's a six over a one, but we know that that's a whole six. It's just written as a fraction by writing it over one. So that can be circled. Here we have 37 hundredths. That's not a whole number, so that's not going to be circled. Here we have the square root of 49. Well, the square root of 49 is 7. That is a whole number. It's a positive whole number. So yeah, we can circle that one too. So all of these were rational numbers, but the circled ones were rational numbers that are integers. Be careful, though. Every integer is a rational number, but not every rational number is an integer. One-fourth is a rational number, and 37 hundredths is a rational number, but they're not integers. Look at it as every pug is a dog, but not every dog is a pug. Whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are counting numbers, including 0. Since integers are positive numbers and their opposites on a number line, only positive integers are whole numbers. Some integers are not whole numbers, but all whole numbers are integers. Here we have a number line, and we've got 0 in the center. So our whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, and so on. So it includes 0, and it heads this way. Integers are all of these. So some integers are not whole numbers. So that would be these. But all whole numbers are integers. These 
are in the subset of integers. So to wrap this up, real numbers include rational numbers and irrational numbers. Under the subset of rational numbers, we have positive and negative fractions, terminating and repeating decimals, integers, whole numbers, natural numbers. For irrational numbers, we have non-terminating decimals, that's non-repeating decimals. And we have numbers that can't be written as the ratio of two integers. We finish with the second part of 1.2. We're going to move on to the last part, identifying sets of real numbers for real-world situations. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope you join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.